Alright, so I know this is a really interesting start to a video, but I've just found a portal to another dimension in this Roblox game. And I can actually walk in it. I'm inside of this dimension. How, how is this made, right? How does this work? So I just want to make it clear that I did not actually make this. I discovered this uh, from a user called Six Mikhail Six, who basically just said like, oh yeah, he stumbled upon some interesting interaction and he was experimenting with viewport frames and he basically just uh, gave like a game file with a bunch of, you know, these cool examples that he made. And what I want to do in this video is I want to show you exactly how this effect is actually achieved, right? So I'm going to show you what actually went in to make every single effect. So the moment that I start the game, there's a thing here called example. Right, so basically we can scroll through and reach every single example, house example, text example, wave, character, image, paints, portal one, portal two, reflection, and we're back to house, right? Each one of these has like, you know, a little description where like, oh yeah, house, uh, it's a viewport frame masking that occludes, doesn't render something, right? Like I said, if you want to actually read all of this and get like a very like specific and technical, you could, you know, check this post. Uh, it's just viewport frame masking on the forum. He actually links a game as well about this, right? So if you want to go and, you know, visit this game, it's just, it's called viewport frame masking, then go ahead. But the first thing we begin with is this thing called house example. Now, this is interesting because from what I understand, he's effectively just telling testing masking right and masking basically just means like things that can kind of overlay something right so for example as you can see this user interface this house actually goes in front of this user interface right which normally shouldn't happen right models normally should not you know work like this right but here's the thing right now my player right he can just go inside if i remove player mask i can't even see my player Look at that. Now, house one mask is interesting because at a first glance, it doesn't... Yeah, there we go. So if I remove this, then we can actually see the second house pass through this house, right? But then if I set it to true, well, then what this is going to do is it's going to seemingly make a new copy of the house. So that's actually very interesting. And another thing that I'm noticing is that like, depending on my camera position, this house becomes more or less transparent. But okay, the next one is this text example, okay? This is even more so interesting because I'm not even sure how they actually did this, right? Obviously, we're going to, you know, dive into the code and see what exactly is happening but like right if i move these cubes around because you know this this text has you know this cube and this text has this cube me moving the cubes actually doesn't seem to do much okay we have a couple of options right so decals just gives me an error okay textures also gives me an error okay surface appearance is interesting because it takes the cube and it seemingly changes the texture and then mesh texture i'll be honest i'm not too sure what all of these do per se but like they seem to just like remove a certain part of the actual text but i mean okay like just ignoring these right look at this look at how cool this actually looks it's exactly like the guy who made this said like this has a lot of interesting potential this next one is actually a little more interesting than the previous one because the previous one right like it looks cool but like, I can kind of understand how it's made. Like, okay, he, you know, he has like a model that's, you know, like a T or something. He puts it inside like a viewport frame and then he just like, you know, makes it update, right? But then it's like, how does he achieve this effect where it actually waves, right? How is he changing the mesh on the spot? Update text waving. Yeah, there we go. Now it's not waving anymore. Background. I don't know. <laughs> that just removes the background. Text mask. Okay, so seemingly what's going on here is that there's a mask that's you know doing this type of movement and then when i remove the mask we can see the actual background so this mask seems to cut out the text so this next one i actually really like okay and i'll, I'll show you why i really like this as you can see my character right now is going through a little uh, a little crisis okay when i zoom in actually something interesting i can actually see the character right so because you, you know how normally like you know if you zoom in you can't see your character well here i can and the other thing is, this actually is blocking the user interface. So here we have a couple options. We have house one mask, which is off. We have update plane, which, yeah, there we go. Here's the interesting bit. Look at this. If I look inside of my character, there's actually like a legit just plane here. Look at that. There's like a whole dimension inside of my character. And yeah, if I set it to update, it's going to go back to being full screen. So seemingly it just updates to ensure that it actually yeah look at that it just updates to ensure that it's always in front of me what about house one mask yeah this just is leaving me more and more confused i'll be honest i mean I, this this makes sense kind of i guess the next example is a paint example and basically here we can just draw something I, I can press t to increase the brush size and r to decrease so i can press r and decrease it makes making it look like this or i can increase it making it look like this 
So this is where we get to probably the most interesting one so far being the portal example. And this is where Brilliant comes in, the sponsor of today's video. What do you love the most about Roblox Studio? Is it spending hours watching long and boring Roblox tutorials? With the exception of my videos which are literally perfect. What you like about Roblox Studio is that it's filled with hands-on problems. You actually notice all that when I walk through it, look at that, my character is lagging out. As you can see, there's something going on in the background that we aren't aware of. And this actually gives us a lot of interesting things to play around. Crossroads Mask. Well, this just removes it entirely. Okay, so this just makes it blue. What about Portal? That just gets rid of the portal. Okay, fair enough. Player Mask. Interesting. Okay. Oh, okay. So it creates a new version of my character because otherwise it's like my actual character right because this is user interface or so i, I assume it it gets hidden behind the user interface so to actually show my player he had to do this that is interesting sky mask what is that i assume it just shows the sky yeah it just shows the sky yeah so there's like a whole world in here that is cool but then yeah obviously if i zoom my camera out we can't see it something that i actually am curious about you see that tree over there right what if i try and see the tree let me see. Yep, there we go. Look at that. Look at that, see? This is the tree, right? This circle, that's the tree. But we can't see it because it's transparent. Oh, I see. I understand now. So it creates a model. It sets it to be uh, fully, you know, invisible. But then we can see it through this mask. The second last, but definitely not least, is a second portal example, which I actually like more because you can actually go inside look at that we can actually explore it could happen to you insure blocks hurricane insurance interestingly enough my models seem to be blocking the actual place but it seems to have like may be making some model i can't actually collide with any of this yeah i can't that that's kind of upsetting the moment i leave right oh i want to go back there's nothing if i try and go back okay then it appears right so a nice way to make this portal work would probably be like to only have it work if you actually go through the portal and not just like here for example right but the fact that look at that so clearly this 3d world actually exists but we can only see it through this portal but okay okay let's get on to the last example right and then i'll explain how all of these work this is a reflection example this one's pretty cool this one seems to be covering the entire base plate the weird part is that it doesn't seem to be reflecting me or the cubes it just seems to be reflecting this house right so and the other thing to note as well is that these puddles right they are going above the user interface and also above the cubes, right? And again, I assume this is because like it's putting some mask on my player. If I set this to false, yeah, there we go. See, it goes over my player, right? Puddle mask. What does this mean? Okay, so this just gives the puddle uh, its texture, right? House mask. Okay, yeah, so just <laughs> ensures that they don't go through. And house just removes the house from here, okay? Insanely interesting the way this works. Look at that. Yeah, if I zoom in again, my character just doesn't... <laughs> let, me, let me turn this off. Okay, let me turn this off. So it just creates its own texture and it has its own house in the bottom, which it quote-unquote reflects. We know it doesn't reflect it for a fact because like I'm standing here, but it's not actually reflecting my player. So this isn't like actual real-time reflection, but nor is it reflecting the cubes, which is interesting. And I, I thought that I, I thought that the, the cubes at least would be reflected, but... So yeah, if I just set the player mask on, and I set the image transparency to be slightly, you know, slightly visible, this creates a very honestly realistic puddle effect, I'm not gonna lie. And so right now, I actually am curious, right? How does this thing work? I mean, we've gone through, you know, all of these, the house, uh, the text, the wavy, wavy text character, image, you know, paint portal, not image actually. Image is one of those things where you have to like put a URL and like it just shows an image right which I, I thought it would be a little boring to do and so i'm thinking i don't want this video to be too long so let's actually cherry pick the things that we actually want to know more about right how's i mean that's kind of interesting right i think that, that this is like the basis so it, it would be interesting to see how they actually did this wavy text is interesting to me i'm curious how they made this text actually wavy character example is kind of similar like i'm kind of understanding like okay they probably have the character and then they probably have like in the background like this weird thing that happens paint also seems you know kind of understandable or like obviously you know it's interesting but like i bet that like the moment we actually look at it it's going to be like okay that kind of makes obvious sense where i am curious though is how does this work and how does this work how do these two portals work right and also just reflection i think would be interesting just because i want to understand how they actually are working with this house do they have like a second house model or are they actually like taking this model and applying it here or is it just a brand new house model altogether so first let's understand how the house works okay if i go into the workspace 
we can actually see that there aren't any objects to make this second house. I mean, we have the classic house, which is this one, but then this house isn't an actual object inside of the game. I think where we have to go is the player's GUI, mask GUI, house viewport. There we go. Yeah, so as you can see, character mask meshes. I assume this just has my characters like head normal, limb normal, torso normal. What if I remove the head? What, what, what if I just remove all of these? What's going to happen? Oh, look at that. Yeah, so even if I turn it back on, my character doesn't work. So the things that were in here, can I undo? <laughs> I can't undo that. <laughs> the parts that were in here were representing my character, but in like a in like the separate dimension, like I said. Sky. If, what if I remove this? Oh, that's... Okay. House 1 mask. I assume this is meant to be this house. What if I remove it? Doesn't work. Okay, gradients. Okay, so that's actually why it was transparent, right? It was because of some gradients. And if I remove this house... It removes it as well. So now we're here with the wavy text. Okay, this is the thing I'm actually more curious about. It has bubbles, which I assume... So is it creating a new image per bubble? I just... I don't want to open this because if I open this and it's like creating new bubbles constantly, it's not going to let me close it. So let me... What if I disable the bubbles? Yeah, I can't close it. Damn. Okay, let's just... Let's just... I, ah, that... Okay, wait. Let me... Let me reset it real quick. Yeah, so it seems to be making bubbles consistently. Wavy text mask. Okay, so we have background, which, you know, I kind of understand. Bubble clonable, which I assume is the actual thing that it clones to make the bubbles and puts it in here. Wavy text mask and wavy text mesh. I think I'm understanding how this works. This seems to be one model with a ton of controllable bones. And what it does is it takes this model and it continuously changes it. It continuously makes it update, right? Which results in this wavy effect. What if I take this model and I delete it? So that model was the thing that was basically using this background to carve out the letters. And basically it just took this model, it started to change it to give the illusion that the letters were actually changing. Next is the character example, right? Let's actually check this out. I'm actually really curious. It has like scripts and everything. What if I open this? What's gonna happen? It's like, yeah, it's like doing a bunch of math. It's like trying to change the lines and everything. Current time, Update time, hatch, model, script.parent, crosshatch. This is very interesting code. So it creates two variables on one line and it sets them here. That's that's pretty interesting. So let's actually see, right? Let me uh, stop updating, okay? Like so. Sky mask. I assume that this means like the black thing. What if I remove it? Yeah, okay. So by default, it's white, but that sky mask was making black. House one mask. What does this mean? Okay, so that was the thing where like it updates with the house, right? Let me remove it. There we go. That makes sense. Okay. And then we have the crosshatch, which if I open this right now, hatch lines one, hatch lines two. Okay, that, that makes sense, right? I, I'm pretty sure that hatch lines one is like in this direction and then the other lines are in this direction, right? Where I'm interested is character mask meshes. What if I remove the head? There we go. Okay, that makes sense. Okay. I, I, I say that makes sense as if it makes sense. It doesn't really make sense. But like, and if I remove all of these... What's going to happen? Nothing. This is where we get to the portal example, right? And I'm, I'm insanely hyped about this. Legit. So knowing what we know now, I assume the sky is just the thing here. Character mask meshes. Okay, that seems to be the actual character that we see here. Oh, and look at that. We have our character, right? But then the moment the bubble crosses, the face disappears. Yeah, so clearly something is going on here. I mean, obviously something is going on. Crossroads mask. Let me remove this. Wait, does it just get rid of the thing? World model spheres. Those are the spheres. Interesting. What does the script do? Okay, so it just basically summons a bunch of spheres, okay. So the way that this seems to work is that these crossroads, that's the model. What if I just keep removing model by model? Okay, so I just deleted a couple things, and yeah, it seems like that's what's going on. It seems like there's basically a whole other world in here, which we can modify, and we can only see it because of these spheres, right? And so I assume that the Portal 2 has the same exact thing. Portal 2 viewport sky, character mask meshes, yeah, so I assume... If I delete this right now, we can't see our character. There we go, okay. Crossroads. Okay, what if I remove this? Remove this? All of it's just... <laughs> all of it's blue now, okay. And then let's just quickly wrap it up with Reflectance, which, again, has the sky, you know, if I remove this... Yeah, the sky is just completely gone. That's... Let me let me actually reset that, because, yeah, that, that looks pretty bad. Yeah, so Sky Mask, Sky Reflection, Puddle Mask. I assume this is the thing that actually may, gives them the texture. And so then House Mask. What is house? Okay, house mask, I assume, is this house, right? Because if I delete it, yeah, we can see through. And then this house, if I delete it, okay, okay, I understand now. So basically, everything that we just saw here has just been an amazing example of how this GUI works with masking, right? So it creates GUI, 
and then it basically creates a bunch of invisible other models right where it basically says like okay this has to go in front of this basically like this is hard to explain but doing that creates a lot of these like really insane optical illusions which you know make it seem like you're going into a different dimension but in fact this place has always been here right the only difference is just that because the original creator of this knows how to use masking it creates this very nice looking optical illusion effect and so like i said if you want to go check this game out right this viewport frame masking by six mikhail six so you know it has four likes it has only 52 visits, which is absolutely criminal. So do make sure to go, like, actually play this game, right? And, you know, maybe follow this guy, you know, ch check him out on Dev Forum, you know, because this stuff is really cool. And so, yeah, I'll just quickly tell you right now, though, that the way that this guy has managed to, you know, learn all of this is because he has an extensive knowledge about how Roblox Studio works, right? Because if you're a beginner, you might just be like, oh, what, masking? Like, like may maybe kind of makes sense to you more now that I've explained it. But, like, if I just sat you down and said, like, okay, this portal, make it right and so i'll just quickly do my plug right now right if you are a beginner you know scripter or you're someone who wants to learn scripting you can go check out a free preview of my course which basically aims to teach you exactly that how to familiarize yourself with studio how to kind of you know think in a more creative way and how to basically you know set a goal and achieve it no matter what it is so like i said if you're interested in that then the link is in the description and yeah bro this was a really fun experience honestly like i'm still really curious like how far people can take this like this is just you know use user interface but like something that would be cool i'm thinking is like what if a player steps foot in here and then the game does some like something in the background which basically transforms this into like a real 3d world right where now it has like actual collision and not just like you know being an image that can't do anything and so yeah bro leave a comment you know let me know what you think and as always we're back to basics thank you for watching